business. Merchandise is bought and sold many times as it passes from the manufacturer through wholesalers and retailers to the final customer. A bill of sale or invoice is a business document used to keep track of these sales and purchases. Invoices are a comprehensive record of a sales transaction. They vary in style and format from company to company, but most contain essentially the same information. In this presentation, you'll learn how businesses use invoices and the math applications that relate to them. Here is a typical format used for a business invoice. Take a look at each of the elements. The important parts have been labeled. The invoice also presents some of the most commonly used abbreviations. These pertain to merchandise quantities and measurements. With some practice, these terms and abbreviations will become familiar to you. Take some time to look them over. When the terms are FOB shipping point, the buyer pays the shipping company directly. The merchandise title is transferred to the buyer at the manufacturer's factory or at a shipping point such as a rail freight yard or freight terminal. From this point, the buyer is responsible for the merchandise. It is common for the seller to prepay the freight and add the amount to the invoice. When the shipping terms are FOB destination, the seller is responsible for paying the shipping charges to the destination. The destination is usually the buyer's store or warehouse. Unless prices are quoted as delivered, the seller then bills the buyer on the invoice for the shipping charges. Sometimes the freight terms are stated as FOB with the name of the city. For example, if the seller is in Fort Worth and the buyer is in New York, FOB Fort Worth means that the title is transferred in Fort Worth and the buyer pays the shipping charges from Fort Worth to New York. If the terms are FOB New York, the seller pays the shipping charges to New York and then bills the buyer for those charges on the invoice. Extending an invoice is the process of computing the value in the total or the amount column for each line of the invoice. The number represents the total dollar of each type of merchandise or service being purchased. The invoice subtotal is the amount of all items on the invoice before shipping and handling charges, insurance, and other adjustments such as discounts, returns, and credits. The invoice total is the final amount due from the buyer to the seller. Let's take a look at the steps to extend and total an invoice. Step 1. From each line of the invoice, multiply the number of items and the cost per item. Extended totals equal the number of items times cost per item. Step 2. Add all the extended totals together to get an invoice subtotal. Step 3. Calculate the invoice total by adding freight charges, insurance, and any other charges to the subtotal. From the following invoice for Computer Mart, extend each line to the total column and calculate the invoice subtotal and total. You'll see here that we follow our three-step process, multiplying the units or the quantities times the merchandise cost. This gives us a total for each line item. We then add each line item to get a total invoice subtotal of $8,769.30. There's $244.75 of shipping charges added for an invoice total of $9,014.05. The path merchandise travels as it moves from the manufacturer through wholesalers and retailers to the ultimate customer is known as the channel of distribution or trade channel. The businesses that form these channels are said to be in the trade. In today's complex economy, a number of different trade channels are used to move goods and services efficiently. Trade discounts are reductions from the manufacturer's suggested list price. They are given to businesses at various levels of the trade channel for the performance of marketing functions. These functions might include activities such as selling, advertising, storage, service, and display. Manufacturers print catalogs showcasing their merchandise that include list prices. These prices are then discounted for these functions. The amount of a single trade discount is calculated by multiplying the list price by the trade discount rate. So trade discount equals list price times trade discount rate. What is the amount of a trade discount on merchandise with a list price of $2,800 and a trade discount rate of 45%? Remember, trade discount equals list price times trade discount rate. Trade discount in this case equals 2,800 times 0.45 for a total of $1,260 in a trade discount. 
The net price is the amount a business actually pays for the merchandise after the discount has been deducted. It may be calculated by subtracting the amount of the trade discount from the list price. So net price equals list price minus trade discount. Frequently, merchants are more interested in knowing the net price of an item than the amount of the trade discount. In that case, the net price can be calculated directly from the list price without first finding the amount of the discount. The list price of an item is considered to be 100%. If, for example, the trade discount on an item is 40% of the list price, the net price will be 60% because the two must equal 100%. This 60%, the complement of the trade discount, 100 minus 40%, is the portion of the list price that's paid. Known as the net price factor, it is usually written in decimal form. There are two steps to calculate net price by using the net price factor. Step one, calculate the net price factor, complement of the trade discount rate. Net price factor equals 100% minus the trade discount rate. Step two, calculate the net price. Net price equals list price times the net price factor. Note, this procedure can be combined into a simple one-step formula. Net price equals list price 100% minus trade discount rate. Calculate the net price of merchandise listing for $900 less a trade discount rate of $45. Remember, our one-step formula is net price equals list price 100% minus trade discount rate. In this case, our listing is $900, and then we multiply that by 100% minus 45% which gives us 900 times 0.55. This equals $495 in a net price trade discount. The trade discount rate can be calculated by using the now familiar percentage formula. Rate equals portion divided by base. For this application, the amount of the trade discount is the portion or numerator, and the list price is the base or denominator. So our trade discount rate equals trade discount over or divided by list price. Calculating trade discount rate, step one, calculate the amount of the trade discount. Trade discount equals list price minus net price. Step two, calculate the trade discount rate. Trade discount rate equals trade discount divided by list price. Trade discounts are frequently offered by manufacturers to wholesalers and retailers in a series of two or more known as chain or series trade discounts. For example, a series of 25% and 10% is verbally stated as 25 and 10. It is written 25 over or backslash 10. A three discount series is written 25 backslash 10 backslash five. Multiple discounts are given for many reasons. As merchandise physically arrives at the buyer's back door, the invoice ordinarily arrives by mail through the front door. Today, more and more, they arrive by email, but what happens next? The invoice has a section entitled Terms of Sale. Terms of Sale are the details of when the invoice must be paid and whether any additional discounts will be offered. Commonly, manufacturers allow wholesalers and retailers 30 days or even longer to pay the bill. In certain industries, the time period might be as much as 60 or 90 days. This is known as the credit period. This gives the buyer time to unpack and check and order and, more important, begin selling the merchandise. The credit period clearly gives the wholesaler and retailer an advantage. They can generate revenue by selling the merchandise they haven't paid for yet. To encourage them to pay the bill earlier than the net date or due date, sellers frequently offer buyers an optional extra discount over and above trade discounts. This is known as the cash discount. Cash discounts are extra few percentage points off the total cost offered as an incentive for early payment of the invoice, usually within 10 or 15 days after the invoice date. This is known as the cash discount period. The last date for the buyer to take advantage of a cash discount is known as the discount date. Let's take a look. Cash discounts are offered in terms of sale. A transaction with no cash discount would have terms of sale of net 30. This means that the net amount of the invoice is due in 30 days. If a cash discount is offered, the terms of sale would be written as 2 backslash 10 or N30. This means a 2% cash discount may be taken if the invoice is paid within 10 days. If not, the net amount is due in 30 days. 
This figure shows a timeline of the discount period and credit period on an invoice dated October 15th. The 2 over 10 or N30 terms of a sale stipulate a cash discount if the bill is paid within 10 days. If not, the balance is due in 30 days. As you can see, the cash discount period runs for 10 days from the invoice date, October 15th to October 25th. The credit period, 30 days, extends from the invoice date through November 14th. Sometimes two cash discounts are offered, such as 315-125-N60. This means a 3% cash discount is offered if the invoice is paid within 15 days, a 1% cash discount if the invoice is paid within 25 days, and the net amount due is in 60 days. Cash discounts cannot be taken on shipping charges or returned goods, only the net price of the merchandise. If shipping charges are included in the amount of the invoice, they must be subtracted before cash discounts are taken. After the cash discount has been deducted, the shipping charges are added back in to invoice totals. There are two basic steps to calculate cash discount and net amount due. Step 1. Calculate the amount of cash discount by multiplying the cash discount rate by the net price of the merchandise. Cash discount equals net price times cash discount rate. Step 2. Calculate the net amount due by subtracting the amount of the cash discount from the net price. Net amount due equals net price minus cash discount. Note, as with trade discounts, buyers are frequently more interested in the net amount due than the amount of the discount. When that's the case, we can simplify the calculation by using the complement method to determine the net amount due. Net amount due equals net price times 100% minus the cash discount rate. Let's take a look at an example. Rugs.com buys merchandise with an invoice amount of $16,000 from Cardis and Carpet Mills. The terms of the sale are 210 net 30. What is the amount of the cash discount? What is the net amount due on this order if the bill is paid by the 10th day? Remember, cash discount equals net price times cash discount rate. Our cash discount equals $16,000, the total amount, times 0.02 which equals $320. The net amount due equals the net price minus the cash discount. So the net amount due is the $16,000, the net price, minus the $320 cash discount we just calculated, giving us a total of the invoice of $15,680. Sometimes buyers do not have all the money they need to take advantage of the cash discount. Manufacturers and suppliers usually allow them to pay part of the invoice by the discount date and the balance by the end of the credit period. This partial payment earns partial cash discount credit. In this situation, we must calculate how much partial payment credit is given. Here's how it works. Assume a cash discount of 415 and 30 is offered to a retailer. A 4% cash discount means that the retailer will pay 96% of the bill, 100 minus 4% and receive 100% credit. Another way to look at this is that every 96 cents paid towards the invoice earns a dollar credit. We must determine how many 96 cents there are in partial payment. This will tell us how many $1 of credit they receive. So to calculate partial payment credit and net amount due, step one, calculate the amount of credit given for a partial payment by dividing the partial payment by the complement of the cash discount rate. Partial payment equals partial payment divided by 100% minus cash discount rate. Step two, calculate the net amount due by subtracting the partial payment credit from the net price. Net amount due equals net price minus partial payment credit. Let's demonstrate in an example. Happy Feet, a chain of children's shoe stores, receives an invoice from a tennis shoe manufacturer on September 3rd with terms 320 and 60. The net price of the order is $36,700. Happy Feet wants to send a partial payment of $10,000 by the discount date for the balance of the net date. Here's our solution strategy. The partial payment credit equals partial payment over 100% minus cash discount rate. So we'll take the $10,000 partial payment and put it over 100% minus 3%, which is the discount rate. That gives us $10,000 over 0.97, which gives us a partial payment credit of $10,309.28. 
Remember that net amount due will equal the net price minus the partial payment credit. In this case, the net price is $36,700. We then subtract our partial payment credit, which is $10,309.28, to give us a net amount due of $26,390.72. Finally, when the discount period and the credit period start on the same date of the invoice, this is known as ordinary dating. It's the most common method of dating in terms of sale. The last day to take advantage of the cash discount, the discount date, is found by adding the number of days in the discount period to the date of the invoice. For example, to receive a cash discount, an invoice dated November 8th with terms 2, 10, and 30 should be paid no later than November 18th. That's November 8th plus 10 days. The last day to pay the invoice, the net date, is found by adding the number of days in the credit period to the invoice date. With terms 2, 10, and 30, the net date would be December 8th. That's November 8th plus 30 days. If the buyer does not pay the bill by the net date, the seller may impose a penalty charge for late payment.